Hey everybody, Sean. Uh, so, uh, made a bunch of videos so far, and in one of them I talked about, uh, I got very specific about where I pushed on the whip with my thumb. This was a video I made about the cookie cutter crack and how I picked it apart to make it work for me. Um, so this is something I've been wanting to, to talk about for a while, and I'm gonna do some writing about it. Uh, but I get very specific with my students about push points on the hand. Uh, really everything is about the hand. That's where you make your connection with the whip. That's where you're listening to what the whip is telling you. So in, in all of my cracks, I use one of three uh, points where I'm actually pushing against the handle of the whip. And that's either the finger, the thumb, or what I call the palm. I mean, it's the base of the index finger, but to differentiate it, it's kind of this upper inside corner of the palm. Palm, finger, thumb. For almost all of my cracks, I use my palm. So for instance, uh, when I do a circus crack or any kind of variation of a circus crack or what people call a cattleman's crack, maybe I'm doing a coach means, maybe I'm doing a snake killer, but it's all this same kind of forward delivery, um, an overhand flick, that same sort of delivery. Uh, some people use the thumb on the back of the handle. And I've even had a couple of students who just sort of intuitively use their index finger on the back of the handle and they deliver their, their cracks perfectly fine. Uh, so this is just more about the way I do things, uh, and there are reasons. So I'm gonna talk for a minute about alignment, and there's you can find other information about this, so I won't go on too long about alignment, but the idea is that any braided whip, any plated whip has a natural alignment where when I put it in this direction, where I would be ready uh, for the throw, it creates a small loop because of the way that it's plated. If I were to flip this around and put it out of alignment, now the loop that it creates is very big. And you want that small loop because this wave of force that's traveling down the whip, it's trying to disperse itself, it's trying to expand, which means it's pushing against the lighter parts harder, essentially. Uh, these aren't physics terms, but the larger that loop is, the more that force could dissipate kind of up and out and away and make the whip just sort of whiff through the air. So by keeping a nice tight loop, that loop sort of maintains its integrity and travels the full length of the whip and cracks down at the end and that's what you want. So one of the reasons that, um, that I crack a little different, I don't use my thumb, I don't use my index finger on the delivery of let's say a, a circus crack or cattleman's crack, is that this loop doesn't just start here in the whip, it starts with the arm. So if I wind up and make this wind up motion to deliver my circus crack, and I have my thumb against the handle, in that freeze framed moment, I come back to here. And that's where the whip is kind of ready to go, loaded. And I have this large of a loop. And it's fine, I'll get a perfectly good crack as long as I'm doing everything else right. But if I do it differently, and I'm gonna get into those details, the way that I do it, I can close that loop. And now just like down here, we have a small loop. We have a smaller loop from the very start because I'm, I just picked up another maybe 20, 25 degrees of angle from here. And I kind of point the nose down as far as I can to here and I can let it drop more. And now I've got a tight loop starting all the way up at the shoulder that can continue down to the resolution of the crack. So, uh, so now I wanna talk about that grip that I use. Rather than, again, rather than using the thumb or, and, and delivering this way or an index finger, my hand position is more like I'm throwing a dart here, the way I'm holding the handle. And what I'm doing is I'm cradling, trying to get the camera in the right position, uh, I'm cradling the handle in here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm jumping around a lot here. There's the arm has three major points of articulation, the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. There's the three big joints in the arm. The way that I throw most of my cracks, I add a fourth point of articulation. I'm adding a fourth pulley to this system, which means more power, which means less power needed from each point and that gets cracks a little more effortless because that's another point to pick up speed. I'm using my hand, the opening and closing of my hand. 
So as best my lovely trusty camera operator can do, uh, we're gonna have the camera focus in on what my hand is doing as I throw some, uh, some circus cracks. We're gonna rotate a little bit here, please. Mm. There we go. Yeah, so you can get the inside. Uh, so just try to focus in on my hand and look for that opening and closing. I'll try to stop my hand at the same point in space if I can. And I'm gonna crack as slowly as I can. So now to really isolate that. So what's happening is the whip goes back and it drops down. And rather than stopping here, I'm opening up my fingers, especially these last three. I'm sort of maintaining my hold here with the index. And I'm opening up and then closing on the delivery. Kind of snapping that pommel, the, the butt of the whip, back into my pommel. So I've got shoulder, elbow, wrist snapping forward and fingers snapping forward as well on that delivery. So I've got four pulleys in this system rather than three. And to do that, it's more reliable if I'm cradling the whip here. Because if it's supported only on my thumb and I open up, then it's really balanced and it could slip off. The same thing with an index finger. So I've got it cradled here, and that leaves me as free as I want to open up and close, snap, without losing the whip. If you ever watch, or anybody who plays uh, or has played uh, a drum set with, with drumsticks, you'll notice uh, that they're doing the same, the drummer is doing the same thing with their hand. You don't hold the stick keep a loose wrist but hold the stick tight with your fingers you'll notice that they're always loosening up and using that final snap as they're drumming so I'm essentially doing the same thing so rather than coming thumb forward or finger my hand position is more like I'm throwing a dart and I've got the handle in there and I'm throwing that forward and then snapping my hand uh, so that's uh, kind of a general overview of the way that I like to get very, very particular with my students once they kind of get some of the basics and really want to get into the whip mechanics. Um, I very much focus on the hand, everything, every little thing that you're doing with the hand. Um, so yeah, I, I plan on talking more about this and hopefully writing more about this, but that gives the, uh, gives the general idea. That's it.